Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Raghav Bakshi and I currently work as a business analyst at Swiggy. I have got an exciting medium level questions for you all that we are going to tackle in today. We'll be exploring two different approaches of solving this problem. First one will be using joins and aggregate and then we'll be switching gears and applying window functions. So whether you are just starting out or looking to sharpen your SQL skills, you are at the right place. The problem that we are going to discuss today is we have to write a solution to find prices of all products on a particular date which is 10th of September and we have to assume that prices of all the products before any change was 10 rupees. So on the left you can see we have the input table on, on the right we have the output table. So if you see in the input table we have details for three products product ID 1, 2 and 3 and we have their corresponding change state and the new prices. So here, let's see for one by one for every product. So for product one, we can see that the price on 1st of the September was 30 rupees. And then on 10th of the September, the price was 60 rupees. And on 12th September, the price rose to 90 rupees. So the problem is to identify the prices on 10th. So for the product ID one, we, we can directly see that the price on 10th of September was 60 rupees. Going forward, let's see for product ID 2. For product ID 2, we can see that on 7th of September, we have, we have the price around 20 rupees. And then on 12th September, the price was 40 rupees. And on 15th September, the price further declined to 30 rupees. But here, if you see carefully, we don't have any record of 10th September. So we have to assume that price between 7th till 12th was 20 rupees because on 7th the price was set to 20 rupees and till the price was changed next that is on 12th of September we have to assume that the price of the product was 20 rupees and if you look at the third product ID here you can see that the uh, change date was 12th. So there is no record prior to 12th. So in this case, we have to again go back to the problem statement where we can see that we have to assume the prices of all the products before any change was rupees 10. So the first change for product ID 3 was applied on 10, 12th of September. So prior to 12th of September, the price of the product was rupees 10. So on the right, you can see from here on 10th September, we got price of first product ID as 60 rupees that you can see here on second for the product ID 2 assuming the there was no price change between 7th and 12th and the last price change was on 7th the price on 10th is also going to be 20 and for product ID 3 the change in price was started from 12th September and prior to 12th September we have to take the base price for this product as rupees 10. Let's now try to understand the method by which we'll be solving this problem. So for solving this problem, firstly, we have to filter out all the prices which were on or before 10th of the September for all the product IDs and then probably we can get the price. So let's jump into the method to solve this particular problem. So here you can see we have the input table. So the first step here is to filter out all the records which have change state less than equal to 10th of September. So here, if you can see these two records and the third record for the product ID 2, all these three records are having changed date prior or equal to 10th of September. So we'll be filtering out these th three records, which you can see here. So next step is to for every product ID, what we have to do is we have to find the maximum change state and we have to pick that price up. So for product ID one, we can see the maximum change state is 10th of September. But the, since there is only one record for product ID two, the maximum change state for product ID two is going to be the 7th of September. So in this, the right on the right, if you see the output table is going to result product, product ID one and the change state as 10th September. And for product ID two, we are getting the change state as 7th September. And we have their corresponding prices 60 and 20 rupees. So this is the first step of the problem. We have to create this table. Now, the next thing is, if you see carefully here, third product ID is neglected because both of the records which are pre which were present for the third product ID have their 
change state greater than 10th of September. So when we are filtering out all the records prior to prior or equal to 10th September, this third PID is going to get lost. So to avoid this, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a separate table for a distinct product IDs. Here we'll be getting all three IDs, one, two, and three, and we'll be performing a left join on this using this table. So here you can see I have copied the table and I'll be performing a left join on my product ID table. If you're not very clear about the concepts of how join works, I've also created a video on different type of joins and how the output changes with each join. You can access that video by clicking on the top right corner of this video. Here you can see that so for product ID 1, we got 60, for product ID 2, we got 20, and for product ID 3, we got a null. And the next thing is we have to replace this null with 10. So let's start by writing a code for this. Here I'm creating a database and I'm creating a table called product pricing. So let's see how the table looks like. As discussed, the first step is going to filter out all the records which are having change state less than 10th of less than or equal to 10th of September. So I'll write. So here I'll write select star from product pricing table where change date is less than equal to date 2024. 0910th. Here we got three records. Two records were for product ID one where prices were 30 and 60 rupees, and the second one was and the second one was for the product ID two where we got the price as 20 rupees. Now the next step is we have to find out the price on maximum change state. So let's uh, take out the maximum change state for here from here. So for this, I'll be leveraging a group by function. So I'll be selecting product ID comma max of change date from the table group by one. So here you can see that for both of the products, we got the maximum change state. For these change states, we have to find out their prices. So for this, what I'll be doing, what I'll be doing here will be, I'll again join my this table, which is the output table with the base table product pricing on product ID and change state so that I can get prices for those, for those particular dates. So again, let's do one thing. Let's create a CT for this. So I'll write with base as so I'll create a CT of this particular output table and I'll do from base a left join product pricing product pricing B on a dot I'll do a dot product ID is equal to B dot product ID and a dot change state is equal to b dot change state and i'll be only selecting a dot product id i'll be taking a dot change state and then i'll be taking b dot new price let's try running this out so here you can see for both product id 1 and 2 i have gotten their new prices so the next step that I need to do is I have, I also need to create a base, basically a table, which is having all the distinct product IDs. So here I'll create another CTE, which will be PIDs. And here I'll do select distinct product ID from the table as product pricing. So let me show you the output of this particular query. I'll, so see here we have gotten one, two and three. So what we have to do now is we have to use this PID base and we have to perform a left join of left join of this table on this PID base. So for this, let's create another CTE. In this, I'll be taking the prices. 
so basically i'll be doing prices as this ct and next thing i'll be doing is select from pid i'll give alias as a left join prices b on a dot product id is equal to b dot product id and here i'll select i need a dot product id then i'll be needing b dot new prices i'll run this so here you can see we have got uh, prices for all three products or uh, for product id 1 we have 60 for product id 2 we have 20 but for product id id 3 you can see we have null here because the left join table had no record for product id 3 so what we have to do here is we can try out a function which is called as coalesce so using coalesce function we can replace any null value with any of our desired value so here what i'll do i'll use coalesce and i'll if coalesce function is going to find anywhere null and new price column it is going to replace that with 10. so i'll run this and here now you can see that for product id 3 we have got 10 as the price that was the desired output so this was the first approach through which we could solve this problem using joins and aggregate function so let's jump into the second approach in which we'll be letting a window function so in approach two again i'll be filtering out all my records which were having changed state less than or equal to 10th of september and instead of grouping it and then joining it i'll write a row number window function i'll write row number over partition by product id order by change date descending as row number so let's see how the output of this is going to look like so here you can see we have ordered our product ids by change state so the next step what we have to do here is again we have to get a list of pids so i'll be creating a list of pids here here also i'll put this into a cte with base as i'll create a bracket so now i'll perform a left join by keeping pid as my base table but before doing the left join we have to filter out only the records which are having row number equal to one from this table because we only need those record which is having the maximum change state so let's do that i'll write a sub query for this here so i'll be writing select star from this table where rn is equal to one and post that we'll be getting only the records which is having row number equal to one suppose that i'll be doing a join on my pid base so here you can see that we have got a desired output that is product id 1 is having the price of 60 then 20 for product id 2 and product id 3 is having the price of 10. hope you like this video if you found this video really helpful you can consider sharing it with your friends liking it and, and subscribing to the channel